يقدم ولا تموت ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ويطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فاز فوزا عظيما. Praise belongs to Allah, we praise Him and we ask Him for guidance and forgiveness and we seek protection in Allah from the mouths of our own souls and the evil of our actions. Whom Allah guides, no one can lead Him astray, and whom He makes astray, no one can lead Him back to the right path. I bear witness that there is no other deity but Allah by Himself, no associate to Him, and I bear witness that Muhammad is a slave and messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah, as ye should be feared, and die not except as Muslims. O you who believe, fear Allah. And always say a word directed to the truth, that he may make your conduct whole and sound, and forgive you your sins. He that obeys Allah and his messenger has then attained the highest achievement. So today, inshallah, I will be uh, reading uh, a few events that happened during the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Each um, each story has um, uh, a lesson, um, something we can learn from. Um, it is a story that might even have like the smallest of a lesson, but it is a lesson in itself. And inshallah, uh, I will go over it um, if I can find it. Um, I'm reading uh, this uh, excerpt from the from the Quran, uh, not from the Quran, from Al Tabari's uh, version. Uh, of, 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 of books. He wrote a whole uh, array of books. There are around 12 volumes or 13 volumes. And each volume is 200, 300 pages long. Um, and you can see how much effort he would have put into each volume because some of the stories that he got from the, uh, were not from the Quran or were not from, um, from the Hadith, but he went to other people's scriptures and looked at other people's scriptures and he would uh, gather the resources and whatever fit into the narrative of, of Islam then he would put it in. Because we do know that the books of, uh, of the, the, the Old Testament and the New Testament, as Muslims believe and as, as has been shown, uh, that they are books that have been manipulated by, by frequent generations. And the Quran is the only book that we know uh, of those thus so far that has not been manipulated by by uh, by anyone. Now, of course, not to say there are people out there who have, who have tried to manipulate the Quran, but in, by and large, most of the believing Muslims today, uh, we uh, our books have not been manipulated. And inshallah, I will uh, start reading the the excerpt. So the messenger of, uh, Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the final years of, uh, uh, of his lifetime in the last few, uh, in the last, uh, uh, few months of his, last, uh, of his lifetime, the last few years after uh, Mecca had been conquered and Medina had, been, uh, uh, had also been uh, taken over, um, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sort of tried to uh, proselytize Islam to the neighboring tribes in Yemen, Oman, and in Iraq and, and the neighboring areas of, 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 of the Arabian Peninsula, uh, into Africa and uh, what is today Iran and, and Turkey. And so he, he sent people out. But the first thing he did was he sent out people to, to the closest tribes that were, that, were, that were in the Arabian Peninsula. So the Messenger of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Khalid bin Walid in the month of, uh, of uh, Rabi uh, uh, 2 uh, in the year to uh, Anqab in Najran. He sent these two people and ordered him to invite them to Islam for three days before he fought them. So he sent uh, uh, Khalid bin Walid to a certain tribe and he uh, told Khalid bin Walid that if he went there, he would um, preach to these people and tell them, if, if you did not accept Islam in three days, then we would, of course, fight you. If they should respond to him with the acceptance of his Islam, then he was to accept it, accept it from them and to stay with them and teach them, with the book, uh, to teach them the book of God, the sunnah of his prophets and the requirement of Islam. If they should decline, then he was to fight them. Khalid departed and came to them, sending out writers in every direction, inviting them to Islam and saying, O oh people, uh, oh people um, accept Islam and you will be safe. So they embraced Islam and responded to his call. Uh, Khalid stayed with them, teaching them Islam, the book of God, and the sunnah of his prophet. And then Khalid, uh, Khalid then uh, sent a letter to the Prophet Muhammad saying that these people had, uh, had uh, indeed uh, accepted Islam and um, 
they were uh, a, a good people and they had accepted Islam. And so the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then invited these people to, uh, to come back uh, to, uh, uh, to him. And so Khalid uh, bin Walid came back to the Messenger uh, of God and with him came the deputation of, uh, of, of, these, of, of these tribes that uh, Khalid bin Walid had sent uh, these people. So when they came to the Messenger of God, he saw them and asked who, these, who the, those people were because they looked like Indians. Uh, he was told that they were the Banu Harith. When they stood before the Messenger of God, they greeted him and said, We testify that you are the Messenger of God and that there is no God but Allah. He replied, And I testify that there is no God but Allah and that I am the Messenger of God. Then he said, You are the ones who, when driven away, would push forward, meaning this tribe. So whenever you were in a fight, when you were driven away, you would push forward instead, instead of retreating. So they became silent and none of them answered him. And in, in fact, if, if you see in this, in this statement, they said they became silent and none of them answered him. Meaning they were being modest that the Prophet Muhammad Prophet Muhammad is saying to them, when you were driven by, by a people, instead of running away, you pushed forward and they knew that this, this was true. So being modest, they did not reply. When he repeated it the fourth time, uh, Yazid uh, uh, al Malan replied, yes, O Messenger of God, we are the ones when driven away, pushed forward. And he repeated it four times. The Messenger of God said, Had Khalid bin Walid not written to me that you had surrendered and had not fought, I would have thrown your heads underneath your feet. Yazid then answered, By God, O Messenger of God, we did not eulogize, nor did we eulogize, uh, I can't say that word, eulogize, eulogize, eulogize um, Khalid. Meaning we did not, uh, when someone dies, you know, we, we, we praise him and we make a eulogy. And this eulogy says that this man was a good man, this man was this, this man uh, did great things, and now he is dead. So eulogize meaning like, we did not uh, praise you, we did not praise Khalid bin Walid. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, then who did you eulogize? And he asked, uh, and they said, he, we exalted God who guided us through you. So then the Prophet ﷺ said, you have spoken the truth. He said, and then asked them, with what did you overpower those who fought you in pre-Islamic times? And we, uh, the meaning of Jahiliyyah. We did not prevail over anyone, they replied. Yes, indeed, you did prevail over those who fought you. He said, the, the Prophet said, They replied, O Messenger of God, we used to overpower those who fought us because we were the sons of slaves and were united, not divided, and never committed an injustice against anyone. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, You have spoken the truth, and then he uh, appointed a man over them as their leader. So when the Prophet ﷺ first asked them, he asked them, he says to them, uh, you are people when driven away would push forward, meaning you did not retreat. They replied, they were being modest and they said, uh, they waited, they waited, and after a while they said, yes, we did indeed push forward. And then we, the, the Prophet said, they said, how did you uh, push forward? The Prophet, uh, they said, we did not eulogize you and Khalid bin Walid. And so when the Prophet said, then what did you do? We said, we exalted God. We asked God who guided us through you. You have spoken the truth. The Prophet said, truly, you have spoken the truth because you asked God and He helped you. And that same God has now brought us to you, the Prophet Muhammad the last messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he said, yes indeed you did prevail over, over those who fought you. Meaning they said we did not prevail over anyone because they were being modest again. And the Prophet said, whenever you fought someone, how did you prevail over those before me in the time of the Jahiliyyah? They said we prevailed over, over those other people because we used to be united. We, we were the sons of slaves, so we understood what it meant to be slaves. And so we were united and not divided. And we did not fight amongst ourselves, and we never committed any injustice. And that's why the enemies that were against us could never fight us, never drive us back in, in, the, in the field of battle, because we were a united people and we did not commit any injustice. And so in this, this story, this small excerpt, you see that the, 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 the lesson being drawn from it. The Prophet Muhammad was just questioning them. But in fact, they were answering the Prophet Muhammad's answers by telling the people that, listen, do not commit injustice. Believe in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were the sons of slaves, so they understood what slavery meant, so they understood the injustices that they faced. Because slaves, in, any, in history, throughout history, did in, indeed, in fact, um, suffer injustice throughout history, even to this day. Uh, of course, Islam has, in the Sharia, we have strong rulings on how to treat slaves, but that does not mean that Muslims or anyone else will follow whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written down or commanded us to do. And so these people returned uh, 
uh, return to their people uh, at the end of, uh, of Shawwal. And of course, uh, after a few days, uh, after a few months, the Prophet Muhammad would die. So in fact, it was a blessing for these people that Prophet Muhammad sent someone, sent Khalid bin Walid, the sword of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them. They accepted Islam, they came to Islam, and four months later, the Prophet Muhammad would, would die, would pass away. And so we can see this is a gift to them because they became Muslims in the time of, time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and they uh, saw the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and uh, Alhamdulillah they became Muslims. Inshallah, in the next uh, a part of the part of the khutbah, uh, I will talk about uh, another uh, uh, another. It's a letter that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi sent to uh, to people and uh, to bring them to Islam. And this letter, uh, being being very, I would say, cliche, being like anything the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi would send. But it is a letter that shows us what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was emphasizing and emphasized throughout his lifetime. Uh, so, inshallah, I'll do that in the next uh, khutbah. You have any technical difficulties? That's why they wrote the Quran, right? It's not electronics. They wrote the Roto Quran and didn't change. If it was a hardware, it got messed up. The Quran is gone. But Alhamdulillah, they had the mind, and they had the heart, and they had writing. And so they would write it down, and they would memorize it, and so nothing happened. Now I'm reading from an excerpt from a, from a book online, and it's it's giving me problems. But inshallah, give me a minute, and I'll, I'll find the, the correct spot, and inshallah, we'll start the khutbah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, um, after this deputation that the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sent to... Uh, sent to, 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 to the Bani Harith or the Banu Harith, he also sent um, other Sahaba to other people. And so, um, uh, after the deputation of Bani Harith, Qab, the uh, Qab was one of the Sahaba, returned and the Messenger of God sent Amr uh, al-Ansari and later someone else from Banu al-Hajr to instruct uh, them in the religion and to teach them the Sunnah and the requirements of Islam. And to collect alms from them, the Messenger of God wrote a letter for, uh, for Amr entrusting in, in him with uh, these commands. So this is the letter of the Prophet Muhammad uh, giving instructions to Amr. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, this is a declaration from God and his messengers. O you, the believers, fulfill your contract. This is a deed from Muhammad, the Prophet to Amr bin Hazm when he sent him to Yemen. He orders him to fear God. Taqwa in all his doings, for surely God is with those who are God-fearing and those who are doers of good. He commands him to observe the truth as God has commanded, that he should give the people good tidings of, of good, command them to follow it, teach them the Qur'an, instruct them in religion, and forbid them from wrongdoing, because none but the purified shall touch the Qur'an. He should inform the people of their privileges and obligations and be gentle to them when right is with them, but be severe with them when they are unjust. For God abhors injustice and forbids it and states, surely the curse of Allah, the curse of God shall rest upon the evildoers. He should give the people good news of paradise and the way to attain it and should warn them of hellfire and the way to earn it. He should court the friendship of the people until they comprehend the religion and should teach them the rights of pilgrimage, its practices, its obligations, and what God has commanded about, about it with regard to the greater pilgrimage, which is the Hajj, and the less, lesser uh, pilgrimage, which is the Umrah. He must prohibit people from praying in one small garment unless it be a garment whose ends could be doubled over the shoulders. He must forbid them from wrapping themselves in one garment which would expose what decency requires to be concealed. And forbid men to braid their hair when it is long on the back of the head. He must forbid them from appealing to tribes and kinsfolk when there is a dispute among them. But let their appeal to be, God, to be to God alone who has no associate. He, does not, he who does not appeal to God but instead to tribes and kinsfolk should be smitten with the sword so that the appeal is made to God alone who has no associate. He must command the people to perform the wudu ablution thoroughly with plentiful water, washing the face, washing the hands and the forearms up to the elbows, washing the feet up to the ankles, and rubbing the wet hands on the head as God has commanded. He orders him to offer prayer at the appropriate times with proper bow uh, bowing and humility, 
and morning prayer at daybreak, the noon prayer at noon when the sun declines, the afternoon prayer when the sun is declining, the sunset prayer when the night approaches. It should not be de delayed until the stars appear in the sky. And evening prayer at the beginning of the night. He must order them to go to the congregational prayer when they are summoned and to wash the whole body before going to the congregational prayer during ghusl. He orders him to take God's fifth from booty and those alms enjoined on the faithful from the landed property, one tenth from the land watered by the streams and rain, and one twentieth from the land watered by a leathern bucket, two sheep for every ten camels, and four sheep for every twenty camels, a cow for, for every forty cows, and a bull or a cow calf for every thirty cows, one sheep for every forty sheep at pasture. This is the ordinance of God which he has enjoined on the faithful concerning arms, uh, alms, he who adds thereto earns merit. Meaning the cup. Lastly, a very important part of this letter. He says, A Christian or a Jew who embraces Islam sincerely out of his own accord and follows the religion of Islam is among the faithful, with the same privileges and the same obligations. He who holds fast to his Christianity or Judaism is not to be seduced from it. So do not seduce them from it. Just give them the law. If they want to become Muslims, let them become Muslim. And if they don't want to if they want, want to continue to be non-Muslims, they can. On every adult or male or female, free or free or uh, or slave, the poll tax is one full dinar or its substitute in clothes. He who pays the poll tax has the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers, and he who withholds it is the enemy of God, his messenger, and all the faithful. So we can see the Prophet Muhammad the entire his entire lifetime he has put into, into this one letter telling the people, pray, be good to one another, believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead of dealing amongst yourselves, leave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then, then put the ruling on someone. Instead of coming together and putting a ruling on a certain tribe, follow the, the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put you on the straight path and inshallah justice will be done. He, he tells of, uh, of, 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 of the non-Muslims, he said, if they want to be uh, non-Muslims, they can be non-Muslims, but they will have to pay a tax. If they, are not, if, if they are Muslims, then let them be Muslims, and be good to them, and be, because they are your brothers in Islam now. And so, in his entire, whatever he preached his entire life, in the Prophet Muhammad uh, he basically um, made it brief, and he sent it to, to the people uh, out there. And so many tribes would then come to Islam. Of course, uh, in previous khutbahs, I've, I've, I've talked about how um, uh, Ali Allah, anhu, and Umar and, and these, they would go travel around and they would uh, give uh, Islam to uh, the people. In fact, one of the, uh, lastly, in fact, the, one of the first mosques that was, uh, was built, was founded, was founded uh, uh, right after the, the death of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a year or two, uh, one of the most distant, uh, distant uh, mosques at the time it was built in India. It still stands today uh, in, in southern India, and you can actually go to the spot and you can see. And it was built right after the death, or uh, some say even during the, light, the, the last years of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So Islam had really, if you, if you think about it, spread really quickly, uh, during, even like at the ends of the end times of the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, If you look at other prophets, you look at the of, of uh, Isa Alayhi Salam. Uh, the Isa alayhi salams or his, uh, the, the religion that was given to him, his religion did not in fact grow as fast as, as, as Islam did. And it would take uh, hundreds and hundreds of years until uh, is, uh, the, the religion that uh, Isa alayhi salam, Islam would, at the time was of course Islam, uh, took hundreds of years to, to, to have a foundation in the world. But Islam on the other hand, it, it, it spread really fast without the sword. Before the Muslims had entered Iran or um, entered Syria, Islam had spread to, to the borders of India. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for, for my brothers and for myself to let us study uh, the seerah, let us study the hadith, and we can of course learn the, the problems that we have today. We can find solutions to it by reading the seerah, by reading the Quran, and seeing that Muhammad said, whatever happened a thousand years back is happening now. Murders, death, war, uh, uh, pestilence, death, uh, what people died from diseases back then, people died from diseases today. Uh, people died from Ebola in recent years, in 2014, millions of people died from Ebola in, 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 in Western Africa, in the Congo. And people died even in the times of the Prophet ﷺ from the bubonic plague, a plague that was spread by rats, and people would die. And when we look at, at, at history, especially in Europe, a, a man said, yesterday, this one died. And it's a, a, a great um, a narrative by a very European. He says, today, Someone uh, in my neighborhood died. The other day, someone else in my neighborhood had died. 
His, his son is left alone, he is crying. Someone down the street, my uncle has died. And so the, the bubonic plague was, was, like a, was like a hell. We, have, we, don't have, we haven't felt it today, that this kind of plague that suddenly appears and kills people. We have not seen it, but people would die from such diseases. And they would blame the devil, they would, they would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People run to the churches, if you look at uh, European history, they would run to the churches, they would pray to, to God, asking for help. And even, there, even in the Middle East, people would suddenly die. And so all the things that happened in, in yesteryears, are happening today, but of course, we do not pay attention to it or we, we close our eyes. Death, war has always been a part of, of, of human history. But we, what we as Muslims can do is practice the religion. And if we practice the religion, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us make our iman stronger. And the things that we can do um, to better other people's lives and our lives, we can do that by following the religion of Islam. What, what is, uh, I read a, uh, another great book of, is about slaves. It says, when the slaves were first brought to America, those slaves, the, the Muslim slaves that were brought to America were, were, were very, um, um, they were very disciplined because they used to pray five times a day. They, they used to eat halal food because the, 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 the slave master, the, the, they used to give them pork. They would, used to, they would force them to eat pork and they would, they, would, they would say, oh, why are we eating pork? This master of ours is not being nice to us. He is forcing us to eat pork. And we, we want to eat halal food. So they would go and they, would, they wouldn't even trust the master's meat. They would go and cut their own meat and they would eat it because they did not trust what the master was giving them. And so they were disciplined. And in fact, these Muslims, when they first came, they were the leaders of riots, of protests, of uprisings amongst the, uh, amongst the slaves. Because they, could, because they could understand that what was happening to them was an injustice. And why, was, why did they know this, uh, this injustice was happening to them? Because many of them, they were practicing Muslims. And they were one of the few slaves that could read and write Arabic. They were, the, they were the, one of the few slaves that were a actually educated uh, in, 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 in writing. And so they would lead protests because they understood the religion of Islam and they also understood what they were practicing and they were disciplined. And in fact, these, the, uh, when these slaves, the, the slave owners would take them and they would put them as, as, as important servants. So the, the slave master would tell them, listen, because he can read and write. So the, 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 the slave, he would write everything in Arabic and then the slave master would rarely sell the slave because this slave was so important because he could read and write in Arabic, he could understand math, he could understand what was going on. So the slave master would give him everything, would, all the responsibilities were, was left on the slave. And so families would be broken up and, and, and many a times that slave would not be sold because he understood and he could read and write. And this is because this is the blessing of Islam. Islam tells us to learn and, and educate ourselves. And so, um, all these things the Prophet Muhammad was put in this small letter, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us the best of Muslims. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to give us the, the, the power to practice the deen as it should be practiced. Zafallah. Ibad Allah, in Allah Yamuru, in Allah Yamuru bil Adi wal Isani, we tell the Kurba, Wayhan and Fashadi, Wal Munkari will Badi, the Eid of Kum Lada Kum Tadakarun, Uspur Allah Aladim, Waya Kurkum, Washkuru, who Yazikum, Mustafuru, who Yafirakum. Slaves of Allah, Allah commands justice, the doing of good and generosity to kith and kin, to liberality to kith and kin, and He forbids all shameful deeds and injustice and rebellion. He instructs you that you may remember, remember Allah the Supreme in glory, and He will remember you and be thankful to Him, and He will increase you in bounty and seek His forgiveness, He will forgive you. And have taqwa of Him, God, God fearing piety and devoutness. He will make for you a way out of your issues. Akimu Salah.